thought what the sheriff did in Broward County yesterday mm -hmm. what was pretty gutsy. You know, armed deputies throughout the schools, and you can only imagine what he's hearing. Mm -hmm. You know, parents are coming to him every day saying, is my kid going to be okay? Am I going to be able to drop him off in the morning and pick him up in the afternoon? And I also think that decision gave the president a little bit of cover yesterday with his suggestion about um, hmm. arming teachers, arming deputies, rather, uh, throughout the school system. That is a lot quicker, Sandra, than it will to take Washington to pass a law or wait on any of the 50 states to create their own laws. It's interesting, and the president says he's listening to everything, and here he is holding another listening session at the White House mm -hmm. as we speak, Marie. Is this a president that is showing willingness to change things? Well, I think his tweets this morning made that clear, including advocating for raising the age uh, for something like the AR-15 to 21. That is a state uh, issue that each state would have to do. As Bill mentioned, that's challenging. But the NRA doesn't support that. So if he continues to advocate for some ideas that maybe go against what people expect him to say, I think that's a good thing. You know, we can talk about all of the different things, whether it's school, uh, having people armed in schools, whether it's uh, mental health screening. But I think these students are also going to keep pushing us towards a conversation about the Second Amendment. And even Justice Scalia wrote that it is not unlimited. Where is the line? Appeals courts have routinely upheld assault weapons bans in individual states. I don't know where the line is, but it's a conversation our country, I think, may now be having in a real way. Like Bill, I don't know what comes out on the other side. It's going to take a lot of political courage on both sides of the aisle to tackle this in a real it's way. It's amazing, Harris, uh, our producer, uh, letting us know that when the president walked into the room there, holding this now second listening session mm -hmm. at the White House, he said, a lot of things are happening. There's a tremendous feeling that we want to get something done, a feeling including at the NRA, he said. Yeah, you know, you talk about people giving the president cover. The conversation with the NRA, I felt, started with that town hall on CNN last mm -hmm. night because you had Senator Marco Rubio there. You had Dana Lace, who also spoke at CPAC this morning. She was in the center seat taking all of the questions from these students last night. Uh, it was pretty combative at times, but, but there was this moment when... Rubio said, we've got to stop being a society that doesn't let, you know, information change our, our way ahead. Basically, he's saying, you know, there's nothing wrong with, with a course correction, and mm -hmm. I'm paraphrasing him, if you get better information that gets you to see things differently. And listening to Dana last night represent all of the NRA members and, and the rank and file there at the organization, as she put it, talk about background checks and talk about you know, the, the component of mental health and all of that. And it, it was really fascinating to see that maybe there is an opening for information to come in for people to consider things that they might never have considered. And I think when you talk about giving the president cover, I think that gives him some cover too. Well, and can I say real quick uh, to Marie's point, because there's been a lot of criticism of the Florida legislature and not passing uh, legislation regarding AR-15s and what people like to call assault weapons. But I would just remind everyone that back in 2013, you had 16 Democrats who voted against that type of legislation, even Democrats that hailed from blue states. So this is often presented as a left versus right issue, and it is not. Uh, and so I think that we just need to be honest about this conversation. And I think if we do, when we come from it from a perspective of what would actually have prevented previous shootings, what could prevent future mass shootings, that's the place to approach this. But too often, I've heard, as I mentioned, you know, this criticism of it's the Florida legislature's fault or if they just did that. But as I mentioned, we've seen Democrats vote against the same sort of, uh, uh, the same this, sort of bill. This was a sick kid, and he's been sick for years. And he was walking around... Broward County, Florida, a flashing warning sign on his forehead every day. And so many people saw it. Well, and, 39 and, and if, visits from law enforcement. If you're going to, to his home. You know, submit to a, a mental health check, which I'm all in favor of, who's putting the information in the system? You know, w w would he have failed a mental health check? Probably well, only 38 him? states uh, require it to be put into I, a federal system. I don't system. think we have the facts or the evidence that would suggest that his state of mind would have been entered in the system anyway. A social worker went to his house a year and a half ago, and she deemed that he was not a danger to other people. Hmm. And it, if that's the bar, and if he operated within state law, w w what do mental well, he was also checked, checks do? He was also checked out by a Florida mental health hospital. And we can go back, and I'm from the state of Virginia, and you can go back to, uh, I don't know if you guys remember, with Cray Deeds, a Virginia state 
senator and his son who had mental health issues stabbed him and then ended up killing himself and the night before he was trying to find help for his son and there was not a single bed available um, at any of the mental hospitals in the state so you know perhaps these are things we can look at to give parents like that some hope and assistance. I don't know what those answers are, but so I, I think we need to look at a lot of different things like that. The president did, did just weigh in further on the background check, saying, I called many senators last night, many congressmen. He said this moments ago in the White House. They're into doing background checks that they wouldn't be thinking about two weeks ago. He then went on to address the age limit uh, in that portion of the conversation, mm -hmm. working on getting the age up to 21 instead of 18. We'll work on bump stocks and mental health as well. He also said he will be going to uh, be taking talking seriously about opening mental mental institutions and in some cases reopening well, them. we're about to hear that is that right mm -hmm. as we await these remarks mm -hmm. uh, it it was striking to me yesterday that this is this is president trump at his best you know being in a room of people or interacting with others and you think about He's basically been taken off the field when it comes to that aspect of him being commander in chief. He doesn't do interviews. He doesn't hold press conferences. That's because the Mueller matter. And as long as the Mueller matter is out there and the lawyers of the White House have control over his schedule, um, you're going to see less and less of it. But I think it's a reminder yesterday about how effective he can be when he's in a room with regular folks. But that only matters so far. I think you're going to hear increasingly from parents and students across the country that words are important, actions are actually more important, and if the Republican Congress or state legislatures can't actually act, that will be a big well, problem. Yeah, but he can do some things by executive order. He can. He can. And he should. And he's pledging action in that room right now. Meantime, signs of possible compromise on gun control. Republican Senator Marco Rubio of Florida facing intense questioning from students, teachers, and families last night affected by the Parkland shooting at that town hall that CNN held. He said he does not support the president's idea of arming some teachers, but that he is open to changing his position on other issues. I absolutely believe that in this country, if you are 18 years of age, you should not be able to buy a rifle and I will support a law that takes that right away. I traditionally have not supported re looking at magazine clip size. And after this and some of the details I've learned about it, I'm reconsidering that position and I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Because while it may not prevent an attack, it may save lives in an attack. What a moment that was. But then he was asked whether he would forego donations from the NRA. People buy into my agenda. And I do support the Second Amendment. I will always accept the help of anyone who agrees with my agenda. And the head of the NRA was at CPAC a little bit earlier today, slamming lawmakers who want dramatic restrictions on guns. How about Kamala Harris, Elizabeth Warren? Bill de Blasio, Andrew Como, Cory Booker, Christopher Murphy, and Keith Ellison. They are not Democrats in the mold of John F. Kennedy or Tip O'Neill. They hide behind labels like Democrat, left wing, and progressive to make their social, socialist agenda more palatable. And that is terrifying. So we watched that together earlier today, um, but going back to Marco Rubio, mm -hmm. and I heard you as we were watching that together, Bill, say, wow, that took guts for took him to stand Took a lot of guts. There. Yeah, that's right. Um, tender moment, um, touching time for that community. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's a county, as you know, Marie, mm -hmm. voted overwhelmingly for Hillary Clinton. Mm -hmm. And for a Republican senator to walk in there, it, it showed a lot of guts on his part. Absolutely, he showed up, and he, to Harris's point earlier, he said, I'm looking at new information. I'm looking at these issues in a different way. That's what we want politicians to do, to look at the world as it is and say, how can I help? And I give Marco Rubio a lot of credit. Governor Scott didn't show up. He was invited. He didn't show up. We cannot be scared to engage on these issues because they're too hard or no one solution will stop everything. We have to be able to tackle the tough issues in a nuanced way. And I give him credit last night, enormous credit. You know, gosh, there's so many ways that I could push back about how President Obama didn't show up on certain networks because he didn't want to be challenged either. But I'll leave that for That's another day. That's also not day. what we're talking about Bill, today. Bill Hemmer, how complicated does it make this matter with the president, the NRA on one side? Because it may not be a 
Republican Democrat issue, but the NRA is clearly on one side, yes. and those who are for more gun control are clearly on the other, whichever mm -hmm. political parties they may ascribe to. Where does that leave the president? You know, I've often thought, even going back to the campaign, that this was a president that did not have. I mean, we talked about mm -hmm. being a conservative president or uh, being a Democratic liberal from New York or going back to the Republican Party, et cetera. And mm -hmm. we've, we've watched this line of his political background. Mm -hmm. um, maybe that gives him a grand opportunity to, to broker this agreement or to make, to, to make a change that is satisfactory, at least to some people. You know, on March 24th, I mean, I think Washington, D.C. is going to be rocking. You know, you, you think that yes. that scene in Tallahassee, Florida yesterday right. was something. Wait, wait till they have a month to prepare and plan. And it's going to be really hard to deny a 16 or 17 year old teenager that came from, you know, thousands of miles away to Washington, D.C. And, and not listen to uh, to their voice. I think the president's heard that voice already. And yesterday was a really good start. And we'll see in a moment here what he says. But I also think together. I think there are a lot of voices that also aren't being heard in this country as well. And I think they need to be heard. And they often aren't the ones that are presented on the mainstream media, particularly at networks like CNN. And I think those voices would be the individuals at the Texas church shooting who many lives were saved because you had an NRA instructor with an AR-15 who shot back. And so I think there are a lot of people in this country from various parts of the country who feel that if you take my gun away, that is how I protect myself. And I think there are a I, lot I of Americans, Wayne including LaPierre. myself. Yeah. Wayne LaPierre <laughs> missed a great opportunity today to talk about the shooting of Steve Scalise, how his life was saved. H how about the number of police officers who have been gunned down the line of duty in the past week alone? Yeah. Had he taken their stories and woven that into the story today, I think he would have found a little more sense. And, and let's be honest about the fact that if someone was shooting at us on this couch right now, we sure as heck would wish that there is someone who knows how to use his gun that is around here to protect us and shoot back. And I think we also have to be cognizant of the fact that many Americans are worried about their rights being taken away, their ability to protect themselves or their family being, being taken away as well. You know, one thing hits me though, and, and I do think about those things because we sit out here uh, on very broad streets that public can see a little bit of what's going on, but we do have a lot of people around us. And so I do, we've, we've had people bang on the glass before, so we, we know, we sometimes think about these things. The difference is we have uh, patrol on the perimeter. Right. And so Security then the question guards. becomes, what can you right. do without Washington getting involved? Because God forbid it would take them as long to solve this as they have immigration or anything else, right? Or even this issue over and over again, which they've and yet I to think solve. That is and, and hardening those targets of schools, just like we probably need to do with many more of our malls, because we know mm -hmm. that those shopping malls are also softer targets. Um, that's something that we can do. Does it have to be teachers? No. You know, the law enforcement talked about deputies. Uh, there are a lot of ways we can do it, but hardening those targets is something that's immediate. And I, I would think that people would want to talk about that. I think that. that's a concern for so many right now, as the president is there with this, this now second listening session at the White House, hearing these families grieving right. over the loss of loved ones. Right. And the concern for many of us is that this is getting so political so fast and it's getting the debate's getting so heated and it's becoming so left right issued and right. going back to Bill's point about the NRA chief up there talking is this is this helping the situation and are those families going to see something done to help protect our schools at the end of all of this well I hope the families see some of that some changes in the wake of this but I think Wayne LaPierre missed a huge opportunity look I don't agree with much of what he said but there could have been a tone of coming together. His tone was so angry. It was so partisan. He went after Democrats, called them socialists. I just think he missed an opportunity in the wake of tragedy to be more uniting, and he went the opposite direction. I was really offended by parts of his speech. It was clearly some Personally, yeah. but you also offended. have those on the left who are specifically naming the NRA as if they are somehow responsible for some of these mass shootings we've and had in this country. that's where they take offense. So I would be offended if I was the, the NRA as well, and I think we do need to approach this conversation from what are actual things that could make a difference? And I think Senator John Cornyn um, has looked at focusing on the NICS database and trying to place incentives on federal and state uh, to make sure that they're inputting the actual data that would prevent people who shouldn't be obtaining guns from obtaining. I think that is a smart and common sense thing uh, for us to discuss. So there are a lot of places of compromise, but it does get partisan. It does that, get partisan. Those exactly. kids at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas go back to school on Tuesday. What has mm. changed in terms of hardening that target to make it safer for them? Nothing. All right. Well, we are still waiting to hear those remarks from the president.
president. Meanwhile, uh, we will bring those to you, by the way, live when they begin. He's holding this official meeting right now on the issue of school safety. Uh, so we'll keep watching that. In the meantime, President Trump and the media, it has not always been a smooth relationship. But wait until you hear the praise he's getting from Bill Clinton's former press secretary. The one thing he says the president is doing better than Clinton or Obama. Plus, Bernie Sanders appearing to throw Hillary Clinton under the bus over her response to Russian meddling. His claim that she could have done more. We will debate. I did not know that Russian bots were promoting my campaign. Or, Russian bots were not promoting let's, my campaign. Let's In April and May, it appeared that there were uh, lots of strange things happening attacking Hillary Clinton. They spent forty five dollars in Michigan or whatever the dollar. Look, I think things can be true. Every time we do the story, we must mention no votes were changed. No voting over machines and again. were changed. No, not only that, but no votes were changed. Uh, you're talking about influence now. I'm talking Correct. physical votes Correct. being changed yes. Yes. last year. Yes. Look, Sarah Sanders said two days ago, Department of Homeland Security is looking at that. Um, I, I think we deserve an answer. Mm -hmm. I think we need to know what the administration is doing. I want to know what their plan is. Yep. But 600 bucks in Wisconsin, I, I don't know. Right. I think we're a better country than that. So, Lisa, <laughs> what this does maybe indicate, though, is that Democrats know that this happened on their watch. Right, that they knew that it was, you know, previous to even that election, which we come back to the question, why didn't they deal with the Russian meddling as it was coming into this latest and election? There's reports that President Obama didn't want to do anything because he thought that Hillary Clinton that's would win. True. But I remember that's, that's what's true. been reported. I know, though. but I was there okay, and it's but not true. I also <laughs> remember going back in September before the election that. where you had the Homeland Security Secretary, Jay Johnson, telling us that the system is way too decentralized for Russians to hack. And then we know, based on the book Shatter, that 24 hours after Hillary Clinton lost, they specifically look to blame the election loss on Russia. So I think there's a place of great dishonesty from Democrats on this issue. Also, the media who are trying to pretend, uh. as Bill just pointed out, that somehow $2,000 on social media in a state like Wisconsin swayed the election for, uh, for so Donald cool Trump. So you're the Russians interfering. And anyone cool who's that, ever worked right? in is campaign politics saying? and knows anything about advertisement spending, that is nothing. That is pennies and not anything that's going to sway so an election. Okay Perhaps she should Russia, have stepped foot in the state of you're Wisconsin. You're okay with Russia interfering? You're no, cool I'm that. not. But I think that then the, what should we do about it? But I think that the idea that somehow $2,000 spent oh. in Wisconsin shaped the election is a complete joke and it is a place of such dishonesty from the individuals out there that are trying to Look, pretend oh, that it is. What it these is. Democrats are talking about with funding, though, is preventing it from happening again. You want to debate 2016, I'm happy to debate it. It doesn't matter anymore. We have an election coming up in six months and that money could go to harden our defenses. The administration does not yet have a plan to prevent it again. We heard that from the intelligence chief. You got to have the tech Last companies cooperate week, with you. You have to have the that. tech companies. Listen, I've had Big, I've, had bigger, I've had bigger bar tabs in Wisconsin <laughs> than the amount of money that apparently That's not going well with you, Bill. You had a bar tab for bigger for than $2,000? That's not great time be, with the show to hear about before, that. Be, before Lent, that was. Look, okay. I, the administration owes us an explanation. Yes. They owe us a plan. Let's see what they come up with. Right. But if we're going to go back to 2016 and say that the Russians cast this thing one way or the other, I think hey. it's just hogwash. Why we we are smarter than that, people. Have you ever identified identified a Russian ad before? Anyone? We see, I've yes, there you. were okay, tens of thousands of them. When you saw it, did you say, that's a Russian ad? I mean, so what's interesting about that the is that there, there is a long article in the, in the Times today that I thought was pretty interesting. It's like teaching bots to talk and how their language is, did you see this? Did how not. their language, it's like a whole cartoon thing, but it's serious. How their language has changed to become more effective in a very short period of time. So what you're saying is so true, Bill Himmer, even though you didn't even read the article with the uh, artwork. I'll check it out. That <laughs> is that, you know, people are going to have a hard time delineating what is, so how can you even say? So this is where the tech companies come in. Votes were swayed. Outside of the fact that it's already been, I think, shown that they weren't. But this is where the tech, you know, and that's a different issue. Whether people were influenced is different than whether votes were changed in voting booths. Those are yeah, two different one only, issues. Yeah, but only one really matters. That's not, what? that's the absolutely action, not correct? true. No. If people's votes, if they were influenced to change influenced their vote. if they were influenced enough to change their vote, what difference but does it make? if they were, people oh, I attended, I sound like when Harris, I say that. People, 
People attended rallies in Florida organized by Russians. And also people rallies have a right to President know that Trump though as well. But can but I say that something? is concerning, you guys. As Americans, we have a right to know that. But I also think Nancy Pelosi Period. is more concerned with undermining President Trump Why and his you take administration. This back to Nancy Pelosi all the time, man. That has been the focus of the entire conversation Bill? surrounding Russia. Is organized by a babushka. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> On that note. Okay, we're going to move Siva. on now. Yet. He's your partner, Those are the honey. only two words in Russian I know. You two well, together. <laughs> oh. Democrats divided over whether nominating a woman to run against President Trump in 2020 is the party's best bet to take back the House. Goodness gracious, we're back down to those compartmentalized voters again. Mm. Could this be a winning idea for them? We'll debate it. And good news for the GOP tax law ahead of the midterm elections. Whether the boost can help Republicans hold on to seats and the effect it will have on the messaging strategies of both political parties going forward. Stay with us. Worker will see a $4,000 increase in their annual paycheck. This, as the RNC's internal polling shows, the new tax law is now seen more favorably than not in seven battleground states, as is the pitch to spend money on fixing roads, bridges, and highways. The news comes as both parties are setting up their messaging strategies for the midterm elections. Something tells me this will be a big part of the Republican platform. <laughs> Bill Hemmer. Yes, it will. Uh, and if the economy's doing well, they've got a shot of holding the majority. If it's not, uh, we're going to have a very interesting November. I don't think this election right now is about Hispanics or African Americans. I think it's about women. Mm -hmm. And depending on how many women turn out to vote, that will go a long way in determining whether or not you hold the majority yep. in the House. If they lose the majority in the House, I think impeachment proceedings on whatever grounds throw a dart, they will begin the first week of January 2019. Marie, do you think that? I you think I Democrats would do that? don't. I think that unless Bob you Mueller... Don't. You don't. I don't think that Democrats, if we take back the House, uh, which I think on balance now we will, that we will start impeachment proceedings unless Bob Mueller comes up with, you know, high crimes mm. and misdemeanors, something that actually, I think the mainstream Democratic Party and leadership will not push that. You may have some outliers who do. I don't think that the leadership will push that. I just I'll like put, Al Green. I'll put Isn't money on it right now. I'm not. Why are you smirking like that? Long. I'm not smirking. I, I, it's a little hammer smirk. Hey. If you look at some of these special elections the right now, not on the national level, but on the state level, yeah. for some of these state house, um, you have you have districts where Trump won by a lot of points and in Democrats 2000. Democrats are flipping it, and they're yeah. flipping it. Happened this week. Actually, and th this is a real danger for Republicans. I know they've got their eye on it, but yep. Too early to tell whether or not this is going to be a blue wave. Or can I? Can I? Can because I, I've I've worked. This is my background is working on political campaigns. I've worked during two wave midterm elections. So this is my this is what I love. You know, politics, right? Um, so I, I think that the tax reform law will help mitigate what would be historic losses for or not you know historic losses, um, but historically. The party not control loses seats in a midterm election is the point I'm making. I think it can help mitigate some of those losses. My only concern is how much of a motivating and driving factor will it be for Republicans because midterm elections are about driving out the base. So they have to be excited. They have to be motivated. So I think it depends on how effectively Republicans can utilize it. Uh, to get that turnout? Is it that Democrats are going to stop those economic successes or how is it going to be used because they need to motivate people to get out and vote and before repealing Obamacare was sort of that, that motivating factor in the 2010 and 2014 midterm elections. You know, I, I thought that Vice President Pence at CPAC this morning, we took that speech live here on Fox News, was starting to get that conversation going by saying promises made, promises kept. He hit that hard. He also said that if you want to bring about change, it, it takes engagement. I'm paraphrasing him now. That previous was a quote. Um, we need everybody to be engaged. He called upon people to actually get out to the polls and vote in this midterm election year. To me, I think that begins the conversation of, about intensity. And yeah, you can mention all these other things, but feeling like you're a part of something. He said you're a part of something that President Trump and I, meaning Pence, have created. Continue to be a part of that. Bill, you're the, the he, he well, the enthusiasm a, no, on the Democratic side. He had a long list of accomplishments, and I think you know, and it should be talked about, and they will continue to do that. In private conversations I've had with 
women outside of work, women who are Democrats, they have said that they felt as if they let the country down because of Hillary Clinton's loss in 2016. Mm. And that is part of the fuel that's giving this, this energy, I mm -hmm. think, to something that we may see next November. And that may very well be the story when we wake up the day after. Yep, interesting. I agree. Uh, all right, Sandra, I know you're working on a little something. I know, so we're, we're getting some new information with the president in this listening session right now. Uh, we're told that this, this is ongoing right now, but he's making specifically some remarks about keeping children safe in this country, specifically uh, recognizing the NRA and what they are pushing for. Um, or agreeing to anyway. Or agreeing to anyway. You're going to have to forgive me. I didn't get a printout Age in front of me. Age restrictions on some guns, according to the president. The NRA uh, will support age restriction on some guns. That's coming out of this so meeting. So the Which president going into But I'm this. not sure. that I don't think that's a federal question. I think it's, it's a not. state question. I think question. it's really question. important to get the details here right. because this is... So the president is saying that the NRA, NRA would back age requirements on long guns. Um, there would be a very important distinction to make. The president did indicate going into this that uh, the NRA was talking to him and they were open to some type of change. Listening to LaPierre earlier, the chief of the NRA, um, he's very heated in this very political moment surrounding this gun debate. Uh, so to hear the president say the NRA is actually willing to employ some sort of change here is yeah, a big deal. I, I want to step in just with the actual quote that we've got from the president now. Quote, I'm the biggest believer in the Second Amendment. He says he's spoken now to the NRA. Quote, the NRA is ready to do some things. People like to blame them, end quote. He called John Kelly, his chief of staff, a tough cookie and said if Kelly were his teacher, he'd want Kelly to have a gun. This is the president talking. On the long gun age restrictions, quote, it should be, it should all be at 21 and the NRA will back it. That's the president talking coming out of this meeting. The pool of reporters we understand are still inside the White House right now. So as soon as that video is released, we will play it here on Fox News Channel so that you can see the president yourself making these remarks. Camera's in there, but we can't roll live right I now. I would just add the political equation on all this. Don't think this is any slam dunk. There are House conservatives who will fight yep. hard against this. There are Democrats in the Senate who are up for re-election in November in states where this president won. And don't think that they're all in the bag for mm -hmm. it either. Excellent Watch this point. political Does fight. he do anything uh, executive would, action? Uh, um, we'll see. But I also think this discussion began after Las Vegas, and it began with bump stocks. Mm -hmm. All right. A former Bill Clinton press secretary claiming President Trump has declared war on the press. Sarah Huckabee Sanders hitting back hard on that as a network anchor bolsters the case that the battle cuts both ways. We Welcome back. New questions about President Trump's tense relationship with the media after a surprise decision to attend next month's gridiron dinner with Washington journalists. Earlier this week, during a panel discussion, former Bill Clinton press secretary Mike McCurry urging White House press secretary Sarah Sanders to change how the president deals with the media, accusing Mr. Trump of declaring a war on the press. Listen. We okay. have not declared war on the press. Yes, you did. <laughs> yes, you did. And that, that's a big big difference and you need to roll that back you got to get the president you can't do it but the president has got to roll that back but the former clinton spokesperson admitting that president trump has likely been more available to the media than either his former boss uh, or than his former boss or barack obama listen to what he had to say he's probably been more accessible than either obama or clinton i think that's a very big difference and one of the things that's regularly left out of conversations is how accessible this president is and how often he interacts with the press but also how often he interacts uh with the american public of course i also did not have a president who tweeted at seven o'clock in the morning so that makes <laughs> i can only imagine what uh the clinton administration Let's go to the president at the White House now, speaking to state and local done. officials. Let's listen and in. We're leading that feeling, I hope, but there's a great feeling, including at the NRA, including with Republican senators and hopefully Democrat senators and congressmen. I want to thank Curtis Hill for being here, Attorney General. I also want to thank a, uh, a really tremendous Attorney General, that's Pam Bondi, from Florida for being here. Thank you, Pam, very much. Great job you've done there. 
Yesterday, I met with survivors of Parkland shooting. The Parkland shooting is just horrible. So bad for so many people and so bad for our country. Families who have lost their children in school shootings and local community members of Washington, D.C., who want to make sure that every child is safe at school. They're having a lot of problems in Washington, D.C. I listened to their heartbreaking stories, asked them for their ideas, and pledged to them that we will take action, unlike for many years where people sitting in my position did not take action. They didn't take proper action. They took no action at all. We're going to take action. Today, we want to hear from you on how we can improve physical security in our schools, tackle the issue of mental health, which is a very big issue. This person that was caught after having killed so many people, 17, and badly injuring so many others. People don't talk about the injured, and they have to go through life with that horrible, horrible situation that they were put in unnecessarily. People don't talk about that. The people that are so badly, I visited them in the hospital in Broward County, and these are injuries like people wouldn't believe. And we want to ensure that when we see warning signs, we act quickly. When we have somebody that's mentally unstable, or like this guy that was a sicko, and there were a lot of warning signs, a lot of people were calling saying, hey, he's going to do something bad. People have to act. As I said last week, we must work together to create a culture of our country that cherishes life and forces real human connections. We're also working to reduce violent crime in America and to make our communities places that can be totally safe for our children, for our families. Under my administration, gun prosecutions have increased very significantly. The Attorney General is very, very much after that. And we're also after the gangs. The gangs have been incredible. MS-13, I see where a couple of commentators that are lightweights said, uh, oh, MS-13, who talks about that? That's only talked about on Fox. No, that's not talked about on Fox. That's talked about in communities where they're killing people. Not necessarily with guns, because that's not painful enough. This is what they think. They want to do it more painfully, and they want to do it slowly. So they cut them up with knives. They don't use guns. They use knives, because they want it to be a long, painful death to people that had no idea this was coming. And we're getting them out by the thousands, putting them in jail, and we're getting them out by the thousands. And our people from ICE and our Border Patrol people are much tougher than they are. That's the only thing they understand, by the way, is toughness. They don't understand niceness. They understand toughness. And our people are much tougher. They go in there, they grab them by the neck. There's no games being played. And I let them know that's what we want. We need tougher people than they are. And our people are a lot tougher than they are. So we're working on getting violent offenders off the streets and guns out of the hands of the dangerous criminals. There's nothing.